Here we go. go. All right. We're just doing a test here, getting ready, everyone. And I'll take my mask off so you can hear me better. Just uh, pop something into the chat if you're watching already. Let's see. Yeah, go ahead. You're all good? I'm all good. Okay. For I now. Will, I will be, I will be covering <laughs> in case something goes wrong. Okay. All right. We've just got a few more minutes. It's about 525. I'm just getting myself ready here. I'm Trish Klein, um, Adult Services Coordinator here at the Red Deer Public Library. And welcome to Evening Artistry. I'll start all that again when it gets close to that time. But just let me know if you're here, if you can hear me, if I need to raise the volume. It looks like the volume is good so far. I'm not seeing anybody pop in yet, but it did say we have a few people that are watching. All right. I'll just put the painting down. Can't see quite the whole thing, but. The snowstorm out there. I'm sure I'm going to go out to about two inches of snow on my car. This is very strange, by the way, everybody. I'm just sitting here talking to a camera. There should be somebody over on the other table so that I can sit there and talk to them. Hi, Anna. Thank goodness there's somebody there. So my camera is this way and the computer is this way. So if you see me doing a lot of this uh, today, it's because I am trying to just check on levels and check and see what it looks like so that I can move the canvas back and forth. I'm just gonna grab my water. So I'll just start to mention a couple of other things we've got going on at the library coming up. Uh, tomorrow night is Book Buzz on Instagram Live. Uh, Claire, our Young Adult Services Coordinator, hosts that, and tomorrow night her guest will be me. And we are going to talk about what we're looking forward to upcoming in our reading in our to, uh, to be read piles. So I have a whole list of things that I've um, am looking forward to in coming out in the publishing world. Uh, on Wednesday night, uh, Fireside Readers has their book club, and right now I cannot remember what book they are doing. Uh, what else have we got coming up? Uh, beginning of next month, uh, November 4th, I believe, we've got um, a new travel memories and that streams during the lunch hour but you can catch up on it with uh, on our Facebook page afterwards by the way this is being recorded so uh, you can watch it later and go back and forth all right hi Lynn 
Good to see a few people saying hello there. So I, at least I know I've got a few people on here. I think most everybody managed to pick up all of their um, program supplies. So that's good. Just pop in and say hello. Just type in, in the chat there and say hello. And I will paint and I will try and look at questions. Um, mostly trying during a break or something like that uh, just to see if you have any questions. Okay, it's 5.30. We're going to get started. So my name is Trish Klein. I'm the Adult Services Coordinator here at the Red Deer Public Library. And welcome to Evening Artistry. This is our fourth season, believe it or not and the first virtual one and I am missing all of you so much I feel like I wish I had a couple of people sitting over there so I felt like I had students here it would have been just so great but that's not the way we can do things these days it's much safer to do it this way and you're all home you didn't have to drive down in the snowstorm so that's great so the painting that we are doing I'm going to see if I can show it to you here there we go this is a glue gun painting as you can see and the glue provides the texture up on the tree with the branches on the swing and then down here in the leaves or the grass. Now, this didn't turn out quite as I wanted, so I may do something a little different tonight. However, if you like just the cross hatching that I kind of did going back and forth, you are certainly welcome to do anything like that. All right, um, just before I put that down, I'm just going to show you again here this little area here, when you're drawing your tree, just pay attention to where you want everything, all right? I didn't provide a pattern or anything like that because it's fairly simple. You can take a look at your um, phone or your computer or something like that if you're having trouble looking, figuring out what a tree should look like. And believe me, I've been looking at a lot of trees lately. So this one, we're going to come out. We're coming out a little bit here, and when we're going up, this is going to be a fairly fall, uh, tall tree. You'll notice it starts to branch out up here and gets a lot thinner. Um, and then it comes out. We want to have a branch. If we were doing a swing, we want to have a branch about halfway up coming out so that we can do the swing area there. And then we're going to fill in the rest of this. Uh, with the with the rest of the branches. Now, one of the things about working with your uh, hot glue and everything like that is watch blobs and some of that other kind of stuff. Um, you can see that, and it works on the tree, right? You're getting it a little bit thicker in various areas, so that's good, but just make sure that you're just traveling along when you're doing your tree. Also, when you're doing branches, just remember this is going to be thicker to thinner. Okay, let's get started. Hi, Carol. Good to see some people on here. I wish I could, again, wish I could see you all in person, but that's not going to happen. So this is just a great way of doing it this way. Now, hopefully you can see, I'm trying to turn it, my light changes every single time. Okay, are we ready to go? Hi, Shauna. Hello, Lois. It's good. Great to see you guys here. Okay, so I started down at the bottom and I worked my way up. Okay, can't quite see the whole thing. And I'm surrounded by the way my camera is sitting on a whole bunch of puzzle boxes at the moment. This is the way it is. So um, you can just see that I'm just 
see if I can pop it up here for you guys a little bit. And I'm just coming up in lines, just like the lines on a tree, all right? I can do it sideways, that way you can see it a little bit better. And I just did this in phases. Hi, Linda. Good to see you on here too. And don't forget, you might have a knot or something like that. So I've just made a little knot there. Fill that in with some glue. Can be a little shaky. You're going to go through about two or three different glue sticks for this. I'm just going to turn it back here again because I'm going to just determine where I want this branch. So I'm just going to go right about here. Okay, that was a little long. That's going to be a very long one. I'm not going to worry too much about that. You can take it off, by the way, if you get some. I don't recommend pulling it off, because I tried to do that. <laughs> it was a bad thing to do. All right, I'm just going to refill here. I do actually have a live person sitting over there now. She's going to do her own work. But it's just like I was just saying to everybody, it's just so strange not having people. Can I, can I have a Yeah. <laughs> Lynn A.R., digital literacy librarian, is uh, here as well to keep me company and keep us on the straight and narrow, as it were. The cryptid has come. Hi, guys. <laughs> Okay, so again, I'm just working on some branches. It's really hard to see, of course, the glue, but I'll, I'll take it up to the camera and you can get the idea there. I'm trying to remember how far I went over on the other one. Now, for those of you that uh, got some instructions um, with yours, you'll notice that one of the things I had, I changed some things. I said, first of all, paint the canvas white. And then the fourth one down says, uh, paint the glue gun, um, the glue uh, white. And I then said, let's do it all at the same time. And part of that is simply because the I'm not sure how much white I ended up giving you and if it would cover the canvas and then cover the glue. And of course, the most important thing is to cover the glue. All right. So I'm just gonna put a random branch just down there as well. So continue on. So all we're gonna do for a little while is just draw branches. Tell you, glue does not show up on screens very well. I was working on a different painting yesterday, which I'll show you near the end, which was a glue gun painting as well. And I discovered I had to use my thumb because my finger was getting awfully sore. Just going to put another knot there. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's continue on up the tree if you haven't already. realized how big a tree this one that I did originally was. And of course, if you see any of the branches on trees, they're not really straight. They're kind of all over the place. Some of my glue sticks are starting to yellow. I have to be careful. I prefer the white. I find the clear ones cover better than the yellowy ones. Uh, Shauna, um, no, I did not paint the canvas white before I started. Um, if you had lots of white paint, you could certainly do that. And then you can paint the glue tree again white afterwards. But what we're going to do tonight is just do it all at once. So we're going to paint the canvas and the glue gun tree at the same time. I was afraid I hadn't given you guys enough white to do it in two steps. And all of this, of course, will get covered anyway with the uh, gold and then the black and then a little bit of green. Oh, that's going to be a real knot in that tree. My hand took a little turn there, if you can see. Glad you're having fun so far, Lynn. That's good. I can still hear everybody downstairs right now, but soon they're all going to leave and it'll just be few of us left. And you can, you know, it's, it's getting near Halloween. You can make this as twisted and gnarled a tree as you want. It's kind of got that spooky feel anyway. I'm going to bring this branch up from here. This is different, you know, usually I hide my, I'm painting so close to my chest and, and uh, it's hard for you guys to see it even when you're looking, uh, when we're painting in person. This time I'm trying to do it a whole different way. So forgive me if I all of a sudden disappear on you here, all right, the painting disappears. One of the things I would say is just try to take off your random little threads that get caught. Sometimes they turn out to be just cool. And when you're drying things, you can dry, use the blow dryer just to dry them off. where that's at. Then I'll just put it up here as well. You can see how it's going on. <laughs> yeah, Anna says, I can see what you mean by the finger getting sore. And I'm going, yes, my finger is getting quite sore. <laughs> Again, I'll show you the painting I did uh, yesterday later. It, uh, it took a lot of glue.
and my finger was very sore. So your tree doesn't have to be straight lines or anything like that. I'll just refer back here a little bit to this painting and you'll notice that it's kind of bumpy. on there, just kind of all over the place, thin, thick, very gnarly tree. Uh, yeah, Lynn, um, do clean up the, the spider webs a little bit. I didn't worry about it too, too much, um, I think on this one, but I think maybe that's because I had blow dried it and of course if you blow dry if you have a, a blow dryer that has a hot setting it's going to just shrink those little spider webs now when I was doing that other painting the first one here that I did I had tried to decide whether or not I was going to um, come up and do more branches out and have the tree kind of go all over because of course trees usually start thick at the bottom and then they go up and then there's branches here and branches there and all over but I didn't like the look of it so this tree is going to be like a really tall tree and we're still working on the trunk here Okay. 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 Let's see what this looks like. We need a little bit more branch. through here. I'm going to bring this one up even further. Now you can also go back and you can do some smaller branches coming off these. There. Again, pick off the spider webs. Just get those off. Okay, so that's where I am about that point. So I'm going to do the swing now. Just sort of as a reminder, the swing is going to come down off of there. These are all just little dots all the way down to make the chain. And then I just came across this way the swing. You notice I got a branch caught in there. Okay. Sorry, I'm just going to clean up a couple of places just over here I noticed I didn't get.
just want to make sure we're taking the tree right to the edge there. Okay, so I'm going to bring, let's see if I can get it so that you can see it, I'm going to bring the swing down to about there. Now I ended up when I was doing this, I ended up going crooked, but that's okay. So just mark our swing again. I got branches in there. Good grief. And of course, it looks like it's best that you don't pick it all the way up. Okay. Now oh, I'm going to come down on the other side. Silly thing. Just trying to pick that up off there. Anybody burnt themselves? Okay. And then just go across and make a seat. That was, you know, my biggest fear, Lynn, was that I would end up running out of glue. All right. Okay, then I just dropped something on there, trying to pick up, as Lynn calls them, the spider webs. Go. Now, with the grass, you can kind of, like I said, you can do it like I ended up doing it, although that's not what I was looking for. Although you could say, really, that that was leaves or something, a whole bunch of leaves down at the bottom there that um, hadn't been cleaned up yet, or you could say it was grass or whatever you wanted to say it was. Um, I'm going to try and just do something a little different here. If I can, let's see, move it a little bit. Here we go. There we are. Just kind of do a... up and down. Kind of have that look. there. Now you can kind of do some grass sticking out perhaps, just doing some little tufts along the way. See that okay? Or you can just leave it or you could just go back and forth and make leaves.
because really this is uh, in the season that I, I believe in normal places is called fall or autumn, not what we are experiencing as fall or autumn around here, which looks like mid-January right now. And of course it feels like mid-January because quite frankly, we are not used to this temperature. Hi, Rose. Okay. How's everybody doing? I don't want to start in on the painting yet until everybody is almost ready to go, so I can sit here and talk inanely. I think the last time the class all met was back in February. And I got everything ready to go for this. And then, of course, we closed down. Okay, I'm just, I'm going to disappear for a minute because, of course, all my paper towels have disappeared. Let me know when you get finished your tree. I'm going to play with it a little bit here. This tree, this uh, swing turned out to be a very high swing. I should have stopped and took a, taken a look at it. Let's see, it's kind of down that way. I'm just going to move the camera just a little bit. Okay, great, Lynn, you're ready to go. The next thing will be our weight paint. So I'm just gonna get it started here while waiting for everybody else. People working on our HVAC system, so you can hear a lot of construction noise. I'm not the only one that made the swing too high. <laughs> yes, Lynn, you know, yeah, if you have no glue, you just end up saying, hey, that's as good as it gets. So we're going to need quite a pile of white, of course, and hopefully it comes out of that bottle okay. I think we're looking at different bottles for the next time. And uh, there is a plan to do a Christmas one, hopefully, oh excuse me, very early December.
one of the things I'm finding is it's very tough to get paint these days. A, everybody I'm, I'm sure is, you know, being crafty because they're having to be at home a lot more. And I think as well, what's happening is all the places that were, uh, are producing paint, some of them may have been shut down. And so paint production is behind. Okay, how is everybody doing? This is the part if you're watching later, you just fast forward until we start doing the painting. Okay. All right, I'm just going to start and paint. Very often takes me longer than most of you anyway, so we'll continue on. More white. So white all over the canvas. Make sure it's all over your tree. Make sure it's tucked down in between all the glue. Okay. So I had hoped that I had bought you guys a three quarter inch brush like this one. It turns out to be half inch, you could use that. You can use some of the other paint brushes that I have added for any of you that got supplies. There's some bigger ones, there's some of our other ones. Give the, all those a try. Um, if not, that half inch will work. It's just gonna take you a little bit longer. One of the things too with the spider webs, um, for anybody that might be having a few issues with them, if you take your blow dryer and just uh, get it over, you can usually pick up, a, pick off a couple of them as well. Okay. So all of this is just going on, covering all that glue. Now, there are a lot of glue gun paintings on the internet you can find. There's a lot of trees, Tree of Life, a lot of really cool other things. Um, a lot of people use gesso or gesso at this stage. But I found that white paint just worked just fine. We want to cover the canvas as well. One of the things I find about the yellow glue is it doesn't cover as well, however, in the end it does fine. I got on an, uh, a drawing webinar last night. It was about drawing and creativity. And I don't really draw as anywhere near as well as I would like. So I thought I'd take a look at something like that. And it was interesting how she was saying the same thing as I'm saying, you know, she goes, well, when I was teaching my students in person, we would all, you know, put this particular um, 
the drawing exercise down on the floor and everybody would look at it and and they'd see the difference and the similarities in all of them. We didn't even, couldn't even take a look at each other's or anything like that. I miss, I miss seeing your paintings and seeing how well you're doing. kind of weird. And Lynn was just saying, there I see, saying I'm loving it already with just a white. Yeah, I bet it, it, I was just thinking it looks really cool with just the white on it too. add a whole bunch of different colors. The colors we're using here um, are some of the ones that I've seen used before. But you can use other metallics. You can just use some other colors. If you Google glue gun paintings, you'll come up with a huge number of different ones. There's one out there that has a beautiful sunset that I really love on it. There's one that they talk about using the glue gun and then they do something to it um, and they use kerosene on it. I decided we would not use the kerosene. Mostly because I'd be the one that would, you know, do things like start a fire with it accidentally. Hi. All right. Hi, Barb. Glad you could join us. As I'm sure some people are joining us late. So Barb, what we uh, <laughs> what we have done so far is we've done the tree with the glue gun. And now we're just covering it in the white paint. One of the things that we're going to want to make sure is that this is completely dry before we go on after this. When I was doing mine, that meant I walked away for a while and did something else. But that's why I have the blow dryer on there. Trying to adjust myself a little bit here so that uh, you can see more of the canvas. I'm laughing at Anna's comment here about the kerosene. She says, Good call. And I'm going, yeah. <laughs> Tell you a story. I still hear about this. We were doing a going away party for somebody at a friend's house. And we were doing fondue. And I was trying to, I had accidentally spilled apparently a little bit of the fondue fuel. 
and the tablecloth went up in flames. Luckily not the whole house. Go over to that friend's and her husband says to me, you didn't bring fondue, did you? Has to be 15 years later. Okay, I just have some of the issues here a little bit with the, this is where some of these other brushes come in that you can really just try to get it in and amongst. The yellow there. got a branch up there that just went really funky. tell you what I did. I've, I have managed to melt my uh, microwave food cover, you know, the plastic cover. Did that this summer. Did not start a fire again, but sure smelled the house up and set the, you know, fire alarm going. So yeah, it's uh, meant to be a swing here, Barb. I'll just show you the, there goes the water. So this is what the original is, and you can see the swing there, Barb. Okay, so now we want to make sure that we've got it dried. So just so I'm not uh, disturbing you guys too, too much, I'm going to disappear off the camera for a minute and dry it with a blow dryer over on the other side. You'll still be able to hear it, I'm sure. But I'll be right back.
All right, how are we doing? Okay, just gonna give you a bit of a catch up as to what we did. I'm just unplugging my glue gun. Okay, so what I did, Barb, is I started out by using the glue gun to do the tree. So just decide how big you want your tree through everything and just make some knots in the tree. It could be wiggly lines. You want a few branches that come over here. And then you are going to do a swing if you want. And I just did little dots all the way down. And it should have gone to about there. It's a short swing. Gonna have to jump on it. And then just there. And once you've done that, just make sure you've got all the things that we're calling the spider webs off. And then you're going to paint the whole thing white. Okay, I think mine's dry. How is everybody else doing? Pop on and just let me know where you're at. In the chat, just send me a chat. If you're still doing the tree, if you've painted it. Anybody? Anybody out there? This is what mine looks like dry, by the way. It's kind of really cool that way too. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna dry, all right, pretty good. All right, just gonna show you what I was working on yesterday. This is another one. This is with some mountains and trees. So, still have a little ways to go on that. After I took the picture, I kinda went, oh, there's parts that need to be worked at. Again, for anybody, you've all heard me say it if you've been in one of my classes before, one of the best ways to figure out how you're doing with a painting is to take a picture of it and then you take a look at the picture because what happens is you your mind sees the whole painting differently and you, then you know where you're going to have to put your shadows and your highlights and also that it is not as bad as you think it is, that you are a whole lot more talented than what you're thinking. Okay, so Shauna, how are you and Lo uh, Lois doing? I'm seeing a chat there. Yeah, I think that, I'm not sure if we looked at doing Zoom. I think because we wanted it on the channel and we wanted to record it for later. Why we're trying to do it this way. So.
Okay, the next thing for everybody is going to be the gold. And I'm really, really hoping I gave you guys enough gold. I, I tried to fill it up as much as possible. Okay, if you're all dry, we're going to start popping gold on. You can do gold and just, you know, I put it over here on my palette. You can kind of pop it on if you want. Sometimes that works better just to take it, drop it on, and by that I mean this way. Just like that. And then it's the only time I will tell you to ever do that. So. <laughs> might want to take advantage of that. And then you're just wanting to make sure, now this is why I've got some of the uh, older brushes with the pale wood that look a little bristlier, more bristly. kind of get you to get them stuck right in there because we're going to want to make sure that the gold goes all the way down. It might be something that we can, you know, take a look at. Because I know that we are getting a, a Zoom account for programming as well. Actually, you could do this with just the highlights on top and it would look very cool with the white underneath too. And no, I can't see you at all. Make sure you're getting the gold in everywhere. Although it really does look quite cool if you're not, if you're just going on top. check and see if there was anybody that has texted me with a we've lost it seem to be okay so far do you look there is one of those lovely little spider webs that's getting stuck take that off of there where that came from
looks very, very light on the uh, screen. I see. It's a much darker, more gold. Gold, gold, gold. I'm using the same one as you guys are. How's everybody coming along? Try to make sure that as you're using your gold, that you're getting all the way across. And we'll, then we'll go back and we'll try and get into the smaller sections there. Notice that I kind of go back and forth. I'm not just going up and down. I'm trying to get it into the areas. All the little nooks and crannies. And I have done it where I've gotten it all over and then dried it and then gone back just to fill in some of the areas so that it's not pulling up at all. Good. I got one going well. Cleaners are very quietly trying to clean around me here. I think I may end up drying some of this and then going back in for the second coat. Sometimes it's just easier than trying to fight with it. mountain painting I did there I used some copper as well as the gold oh good now they're going great so that's good This is a good one to try to do virtually. It's fairly simple. Um, I'm keeping a damp brush mostly, Anna. Uh, I'm looking at your question and then not talking to you this way. Um, because I'm trying to water the paint down just a little bit, not much. I find that what I've got is fairly thick and I want it to move a little bit more. So in this case, it's still normal paint, um, but I'm using a damp brush. I'm 
just to get the paint across the canvas. Saying this is a good one to kind of start with or start the season with. If I was doing something a little more difficult, yeah, I think uh, probably something more like Zoom where I could see everybody would be better. Using the bot, doing the bottom here. Yeah. Seeing the comments below. So if you pop over here. Okay. Is there a comment section down below? Maybe. I'm not seeing your comments. Okay. Okay. All right, we're good then. We're good? Okay. A little afraid we were going to have other comments that I was missing. Yeah, Candace asked if oh. you were missing your comments, and I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> no, I've been talking to the, talking to the comments. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing the ones that are coming up. One of these things about doing this kind of stuff, you almost need a running pattern or something like that. I don't have a running pattern. I could tell you all about my dog. My poor dog is 13, has a heart issue. has more energy than most little puppies still, but has gotten very fussy in her old age about what she wants to eat and is driving me crazy. I want to take her to a dog food buffet where she could sit there and she could say, oh, that's what I want to eat. because I can't buy at the dog food store for her. At one point she was eating chicken and now she's decided that that's not good enough for her. But she wants something to eat. All right, I just may take this and dry this before I start pulling paint off. And then I'll come back and finish that there. I don't think a dog buffet exists, but I want one for her. <laughs> I'm sure that she would just sit there and, and put her nose up to anything. Okay, be right back.
see if you could grab me a glass or a cup of water. I forgot to get something to mix the paint with. Thank you. What was that? Yes, please. Okay, so. All right. Ah, my daughter's on. Hi, Kaylee. We're not doing anything really exciting right now except adding gold paint on. Yeah, that's great. I just need something to mix. There, perfect. Thank you so much. I forgot to get water to thin down the paint. So Linnea ran and got some water for me. <laughs> I'm sure these, these poor people who are coming in to clean the library, our cleaners are getting shushed as they come in to clean this area. It's like that uh, Superstore commercial. No, we're filming in here. I'm just on level two at the downtown library right now, so it's very quiet. Okay, how are we all doing? I'm just going back in, getting the gold there. How are we doing for time? We're doing well for time. Good. So all I'm doing now is just popping all the gold paint down into the crevices here. And you can use whatever kind of a brush you want. Whatever works best. And I haven't gone around and done the sides at all. You can certainly do them with black, or if you have enough gold left over, you can do them with gold. Yeah, I'm pulling up the gold again. This point in the class, we're generally just watching the paint dry. The next part that we're going to be doing is putting the black on. We've hit the most difficult parts and the next two parts are just highlighting and putting the shadows in as you want.
Notice I'm just trying to get all the white covered. Really just a, looks like a pale yellow on the screen there. So it's brilliant gold, as you can see, for anybody that has one of the supply kits. Um, Lynn, uh, no, you don't really need to do more than one. It just as long as it's got good coverage of the gold. And you've got gold down in all the little crevices. Don't worry about it. We're going to go over it again with the light black. The very watered down black. And a lot of that will depend on how much black you want to put in as well. just show you here you can see sort of the difference that's sort of where it ends up at and that's what I've got right now so you can see how much things will change Has anybody been taking up anything new creatively or old creatively? What else have you been doing? Well, have you been at home more? Has anybody had time to take up a new hobby? It's one of those that didn't do a lot. I'm just starting to get back into doing my needle felting. I did sew some masks. I mean, the pandemic has been good for one thing, bringing out a lot of, you know, there's been a lot more people that have been offering classes online. So you can do a lot of different things. I'm now just taking the paint off. My daughter says uh, that her new hobby is binge watching TV and yeah that's been mine too. Although I'm a TV watcher anyway so I don't know if it's been in there. Oh, dress design. Oh, cool. Oh, I'd love to see some. That's very cool. And I did a couple of online paint castles, and yes, yeah, she's doing her own nails now and selling. Some nails, gel nails. Very cool. As we can tell, I do not do my nails unless it's paint.
but they are very cool. All these times that we wouldn't have been out normally. I have to find a way to keep busy. Anybody been doing any more reading? Any good books? I really liked uh, The Secret Messenger by Mandy Robot Robotum. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So it takes place in Venice. I really like Venice when I traveled there. And it takes place in Venice during World War II, and she's a member of the Italian Resistance. So, very cool. <laughs> Anna says, yeah, the paint techniques are paying off and painting the nails. I like that. You're painting really small, though, aren't you? Okay, how's everybody doing? I'm going to dry this, and then I'll get uh, back to you. I'm just checking all the comments here. I think I'm catching, keeping up okay. All right, I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, cool. I used to I used to do rug hooking a long time ago. Did you make a full rug at all, Lynn? It's amazing what we've, you know, tried and come back to and. All right, how's everybody doing? Are we ready for the black? Okay, anybody? So what I'm doing right now, let's see, yeah, you can see, is I am just watering down the black paint. No. I want it fairly liquidy. I'm going to try that. If it's, if it's too liquidy, I can add a little bit of black in. So don't just dump water into your black. And uh, especially if you've got supplies and that's the only black you have. Okay. All right. I'm just going to wait a couple of seconds. We've got people just wanting to dry theirs. Okay. All right.
I don't know if you've all seen that we are open additional hours starting Thursday. We will be opening till 8 o'clock Monday to Thursday. And we're going to be open Fridays and Saturdays now. So I think it's 12 to 5 on Fridays. So you guys can come and pick up your holds a little longer and some on the weekend. And browse at Timberlands and the Daw for 30 minutes now. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Lynn, Lynn said she did a rug bathroom mat size doing rug cooking. All right, so are we ready? Do we have some black? What we're going to do, this is where you are going to have paper towels or a, uh, a um, cloth of some description, a rag, whatever. And you're going to have your black. And the black is going to go on here, right over everything. Just like this. And then you're going to take a little bit off. So you may like a lot of the black on and you, you decide. This is the part where you're going to decide how much you want on. So remember, it's easier to put more on than to take it off. Okay. So, putting it on. Popping it off. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? I'm not too far ahead of everybody here. Okay, so we're putting it on. And then we're taking it off. I find on just the canvas parts, it's easier just to pull it down. You don't have to go as dark as I'm going either. Oh, 
interesting. It took your base paints off. I wonder, was it completely dry? I dry it off, put some of the paint back on, and then make sure that's all dry and try it again. How wet was the paint? Like, how much did you water down the paint? I'm using a very light touch as well. because of course anybody who's taken a class from me knows by the end of it I've just I've spread out all over and I'm trying to do that here but it disturbs things like the computer Black is fairly liquidy too, so yeah, I would just make sure that you're your base color got was quite dry and then try again. Yeah, I guess I'll just bring it over. This is sort of how wet I have. It's quite watery. Sorry, Lynn, I'm just trying to read your comment here. Black is just on lightly. Yeah, it's a very light covering. So you can just kind of see, hopefully, um, how wet it is as I'm putting it on there and how it runs. And then take Take it off however much you want to take it off and what we're going to do is we're going to go back just a little bit with the black and check the um, shading once we've got this all on
Okay, so. So there, I've probably covered my black as much as I want. You notice the change now in the color, right? It's got the gold underneath there. Should do the sides too. Gold is underneath. And you can still see some of it, but it's turned into this very kind of a spooky black gold, which looks totally different, of course, on screen. Okay. So at this point in the painting, you have taken, we've, uh, I'll just run over everything. What we first of all did was we took the glue gun, we put the tree on with the glue, we painted over the tree and the rest of the canvas with the white, we made sure everything was dry, we put the gold on made sure everything was dry again, and then we put a liquid black um, so that we've added water to the black paint to make it more liquidy, and gone over that, and then taken some off with a paper towel. Now, at this point, this is where you're going to go over before we do the green, and see where you might want to darken a little bit more with the black uh, just to get just bring this over in some of the branches underneath add a little bit more dark that you would leave on there just to give some more of the shadows okay Is that making sense to everybody? So I'm just going to take a look at some of the branches where I might want to pop things along. And if you need to, this may need to have a bit more gold put on it too. You can go back in as well. Oh, that was bad. I just took everything off. Okay, I'm going to dry that. I'll dry that and leave it for a while. And this is the point, too, you may want not to have such liquid black. You may want a thicker black, so you may want to just add a little black, more black to your water. Okay, so somebody asked where would we put more black. So, put more black sort of underneath the tree branches here, in underneath, right down in these crevices to get them really dark. I'll just show you a couple. I'm going to take one of my smaller brushes here, which apparently I have gold on. And I'm just going to kind of pop a little bit of black in there. A little bit of black in that area. So you can see them popping out a little bit more. 
with that shading on there. No, that doesn't need that much black. All right. And then into some of these deeper crevices. And you can come in and you can go down here as well into your grassy area and just pull some of the black along there. And if it ends up being too much, you can go back in and just lighten it all up with a bit of water. learn to leave well enough alone that's a bit of a mess over there but I'm going to leave it and I'll fix it later and just doing all of that just pops everything out a little bit more Do another check in. How's everybody coming along? Yeah, you can do your own thing. You don't, like I said, I on the uh, other one here, I have used some copper. So you can do copper, you can do silver, you can do whatever takes your fancy. Got a good from one person anyway. Hopefully the rest of you haven't just, you know, given up and started drinking or something. So I'm still just going around and I'm just popping in some black here and there, just in the crevices. Leave that one spot that I've managed to pull things up off of. This 
where I think I had some paint that may have still been wet. Okay, you can see that there. Let's put it, pull it up this way. Okay. <laughs> Has anybody drank the paint water? That's one thing I've managed not to do is drink the paint water. <laughs> In all the time I've been painting. It has come close. It has come close. It's good reasons I don't have a glass of wine necessarily well. I paint. It's one of the benefits, isn't it, of uh, a virtual paint night is that you guys can be sitting there and drinking the wine or your other favorite drink. I have some cold tea. Just checking all my spots. It's really interesting sort of how I, my color changes as I <laughs> change that. Just going to move this a little bit. Of some of my junk here. So I did a mix of green and the blue for everybody. And hopefully it is mixed fairly well by now. This is kind of what it looks like. You can see that the green shows up, the blue shows up, but it does come out a nice color when I put it on the palette. if it comes out at all. Oh, there we go. All right, so that's the green there. to need a little bit more water in that. Barbara, wondering how well this old color will work with the, the silver. I do a 
and experiment and just make sure. I mean, it should look very pretty, but I just double check. As you can see, I already have paint all over me. Not surprising. Okay. So this is very similar, of course, to doing the black, uh, the green but you have are trying to put on less now just go over here in this painting i did do a little bit over here you can see some of the green all the way up into there on top over here and then i did put a little bit here and there throughout it just pops everything now, of course, you can stop right here with this color, with the black, if you want to. If you think that's great, you can leave it right there. But the green does add something. Again, what you're trying to do is put some on. Okay, that's not... and then pop it off. I think that may need more water. Really doesn't take a lot of the green. here. I'm going to put a little bit like that on. Then I really try to take out quite a bit of it. Okay. making the tree look a little gnarlier. I have put on a bit too much there. I want to go back and put in some of my black. So the good thing is that you can go back in with a little bit of the black, a little bit of the gold, if it just goes a bit too much for you. All right. Apparently I'm not allowed to touch those branches at all. You just want to take paint up off those.
Okay. Just checking in to make sure there's no comments there. to fix this. I'm just making it more of a mess. And it'll get fixed tomorrow. So we're taking this very lightly, this green, just to do it in there because that's kind of what the look I want at this time. So you can see the green just in there. It's much darker, of course, the gold and the black in person, so it doesn't show up as much. If I don't like how much I've done, I can always go back in with a little bit of black too and just tone it down. Okay. Do a little bit of green right up on the top here. really needs to be much more watered down than what I've got. Just a little green up there, that's better. Okay, how's everybody doing? I don't know about you, but my paint water is looking a little ragged right now. Am I doing the green on the swing? I did a little bit of the green on the swing, not a lot. It's sort of, um, I don't know if you can see it there, Lynn, it's more in the middle area rather than quite on it, although so I like that idea. I'm going to just try and do a little bit and then I'm going to take it all off. and come back in. 
My green is very green today. And then come back in. Yeah, the shade doesn't have to be a particular color. I like the emerald. The emerald or teal was kind of suggested, so that's what I had done. However, if that's the kind of green you like, it does make it look kind of old and ancient and very mossy. Okay, just don't touch that part that you've wrecked. Let it dry, try again tomorrow. checking to see if anybody has checked in in other places. I'm looking away from the camera, just checking the... It's funny, I feel like I should have the camera here, but then, you know, then I can talk to you better over here. So we've got about 15 minutes. We did fact really good on time in me getting it actually done. So if you have some questions, if you need to send me a picture, you can always email it to me and then I can let you know if there's any anything I can help you with. Ends up being a very spooky tree. Actually turned out well for a Halloween kind of a project instead of March. Looking at a couple of things for the Christmas one, I think I've decided to do a lamp post with a sign for Christmas. We'll see happens in the next week or so but we'll sign up we'll sign up slightly differently there'll be a, a form online that you can sign up and you can ask for either the supplies or the supply list and um, hopefully actually we'll publish the supply list somewhere that was a suggestion um, so that uh, I'm not having to send everybody the supply list just direct you to to that area on our website. And then hopefully we'll do another paint night again in February and it will still be virtual. At that point, I'm not quite sure what we'll do on that one. It's planning ahead, but, you know, I had a whole bunch of different ones planned. I think I had four planned. We're going to do one on a black canvas, a calla lily on a black canvas. So we'll see, see what, what happens. Yes, yes, that's all we do. How do you like yours? Actually, I'm not sure which who you are, floating pie. <laughs> I hope it turned out well. Anybody that wants to email me theirs can do so. We 
You can sign it with a black pen or something down at the bottom if you want to add that. You can paint the sides, of course, because of course the sides aren't painted. So if you have lots of paint left, you could do a black, you could do a um, the gold all the way around and then take the black, um, the, the, uh, the watered down black and do it all the way around here as well. Ah, Jacqueline, okay, great. Wasn't one I recognized. Oh, pink, pink would look really good. I hope it turned out well. You should email me that picture of Jacqueline. I'm glad you got the supply list. I don't always look at my emails during the during the uh, weekend. Anybody else? How's everybody else's coming along? everybody can see this. Well, it really does change color. <laughs> there we go. It's the closest to the gold as we can get it there. Ah, good. I've got a we're doing good here. That's good to hear. Do we have any, any questions? Any other problems? Hope they are all turning out well. Oh, all the um, materials for those of you that picked up supplies, all of those supplies are yours to keep. You don't need to bring anything back. So you've got something to hold on to for the next paint night. And yes, this has been recorded, so if anybody um, is having any issues or wants to do it again, you can uh, just get back on on our Facebook page and take a watch again. I don't know if anybody can hear, we're still doing obviously some late night construction here. It's, you can hear the saws going or the drills and... Oh, Lynn, I'm glad. I'm glad you like it. I think it's a really, really cool painting. And again, as I said, you can start doing some other things as well. This is the other one that I tried to do yesterday there. Quite love the, the trees, the way they turned out. I want to get back in and play with the darks right up in here. I think this should be darker now that I've looked at it again. But I do like the copper and the way that the copper is. You can, you can kind of tell the difference between the two of them of the different ones, right? Let's see if you can see those. Oh, bring them down, Trish. There we go. And I don't know if you can see the copper on there as well. Oh, black and gold for the sides. Yes, I think the black and gold for the sides is going to look really nice. And that and that finishes off the painting a little bit. You're very welcome, Rose. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hope you got it done and really liked your painting. where I'd love to see where everybody is. Yes, so, so you can send me, email me your finished paintings. 
see how well and see how well they've turned out and I hope you really enjoyed it I really like the what, how the glue gun adds the texture to it a little bit in here just gives you something that pops out really I'm going to have to fix that piece just while I'm waiting here check on any more questions I'll just show you what I'm going to do with this I'm just going to go in with a little bit of the black as you can see you can kind of do it with anything that anything else that you might So I'm just trying to darken some of this area up there. I'm glad you have fun, have fun, Jacqueline. Yeah, painting is one of those great things that can really relax you. Gets the creativity going, and I know we've got a lot of stress these days. So. just going to pop in a little, a little more gold in this area. Oopsie. There, that'll give it a little more punch, I think. Just adding a little bit of gold into this area. <laughs> Barb, that's the story of my life. Go grab a different color of paint and then mess something up and now have to clean it up. everyone well we're just finishing up for the night we've got about five more minutes but we'll just see how everybody is doing here don't want to get off if you're not quite ready any other questions for this evening I'm going to go home and see if my dog will eat her treats or something else. If I heat up a, you know, some hamburger just right to the right temperature, she might be fine with it. I'm going to have to go on a search tomorrow for more biscuits or something that she'll, she'll like. Okay, I'm going to get... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to try the dog buffet. See if I can't find a dog buffet somewhere there. All right, we're, all, we're going to end this evening. Hopefully all of you had a lot of fun. And everything turned out really, really well. If you have any questions, um, certainly email me. And I will see what I can do to help answer them stay tuned look for the christmas one look for the other one and i hope that you can all join uh, later have a really really good night <laughs> yeah.
Jacqueline says, put the dog food on a fancy tablecloth. I'm going to have to try that with a little bottle of wine for her. Okay. Good night, everyone. Have a great day.